A lot of expats here, uh, if you're lucky, you're working for a big international company, they relocate you to Singapore, they pay for all of your expenses, you get a nice expat package for the children to go to international school. You have kind of expats that are really living in that expat bubble. Uh, I didn't have any of that. I just moved, I came here, and then I found a job uh, on a local contract for a local company. Hi, I'm Felix Mollinga. I've been in Singapore for almost five years, but I'm originally from the Netherlands. So my current role is as a business designer. My background is actually more in product design and in between I was doing service design, which basically means that I design all sorts of stuff which is not really tangible. A airport or a bank, for example, they don't sell any products per se, but you go there and you have a certain experience and there's a certain flow of people in a space. So those are kind of the things that a service designer designs. We think about the flow of people and the experience that they have, as well as how to monetize that, of course. I originally started my career here because I came uh, to Singapore on an exchange. I went to La Salle for one semester. I stuck around uh, a second time for an internship. And then after my internship, I graduated and decided why not try to go back to Singapore. In the Netherlands, a lot of the public services or a lot of things are already very established. Singapore, in a sense, is, is developed very differently. Um, there is a high awareness of design, but a lot of public services and a lot of other innovation is still ongoing. Take Sweet Tune, for example. First time I came there four or five years ago, they had only had a menu in Chinese. And then now they have a digital menu. You can order with a QR code. Uh, the payments are digital. They've translated everything. And I thought I would be able to do more interesting work here than I would be able to do in the Netherlands. So I landed my first job in Singapore by starting to apply pretty diligently. And I didn't have any prior connection. Uh, I created a spreadsheet, and I think maybe there were 30 or 40 companies or something like that on that list. And I was persistent in kind of applying and following up with them. My first job was starting for a Singaporean company. We had a small team, only about 10 people. I think the work culture in Singapore is generally pretty intense. Uh, clients do demand work to be done. And I'm speaking from an agency setting in my first job. I was working at a consultancy. And if a client sends you an email and you don't reply within two hours, then sometimes they text you and they're like, hey, what's going on? Can we please get a reply? You have deadlines, you have multiple projects going on. So the workload is pretty high, but the work is also interesting. Um, it's diverse. You have lots of different types of projects going on for different industries. So it's exciting, but you need to put in the work. So my salary at the moment is about 8.8K. So my biggest monthly expenditure is rent, 1,005 a month. Uh, I live in a house with three housemates, so that's just rent for one room. Uh, then after that is food and groceries, eating out, and my monthly expenditure at the moment is around 3k a month. That leaves you with about 5k every month as disposable income. I'm not really conscious of my savings. Uh, I just have money left over at the end of the month or I don't have a saving goal or, or something like that. So I'm currently investing with a sustainable bank and they offer kind of investing in innovation and, and green energy projects. And I would rather put my money in a place like that where it's kind of doing something good for the world than really trying to maximize the interest rate somewhere else in a very commercial place. The first time I got interested in crypto, uh, I did a project in university around cashless spending and the anonymity that comes with that. This was several years ago. I wish I'd invested a bunch of money in crypto at the time. I didn't. The first time I bought crypto was, I think about half a year I, I dollar cost averaged in. And then at some point it started going up and I felt it just didn't make sense anymore. Uh, to keep buying, so I just stopped that, and now it's just there as a little piggy bank. So when I was working in Singapore with a lot of service design, I also wanted to continue a little bit with product designs. So I enjoyed that process. I started making kind of colorful iridescent textures, um, trying to experiment with this machine that's able to print so finely and precisely. At the moment, the 3D printing is not really a side hustle yet. I'm not really producing or selling any of it. Uh, and maybe in the end, after I make a couple more models and I experiment a little bit more, I can turn it into something like a side hustle. 
My philosophy towards work is that I think it's pretty important to enjoy what you're doing. I don't think I could be in a job just for the money. And that's also, of course, a pretty privileged thing to say. Both of my parents were teachers, so they really pursued their interests. So not really kind of after the money, but after doing something that they found was meaningful. And I, I think they also kind of brought me up with the philosophy that if you really follow what you're interested in, you do work you enjoy, then the money will follow.